Woo. All right. And so uh, as Austin was talking, I made this, I made this slide. Um, here, there's us. There, there we are. And so uh, we want to talk about two, two of the most powerful weapons to look at the brain. Uh, the SPECT scan and what I use is, is the neural scan. So uh, Dr. Hensland is, is, uh, has looked at a bunch of different SPECT scans. He'll show some tonight. And I've been looking at neural scans. So we're going to put those two worlds together when it comes to hemp. If you guys know what a SPECT scan is, um, this is from one of my other slides that I presented before. Single photon emission whatever, CT. <laughs> and, uh, tomography. Yeah, com uh, computer tomography. And so, um, Dr. Hanson, do you want to just describe what we're really seeing here as a, as a baseline yeah. so we can have a, something to frame off of? Yeah, a SPECT scan is a metabolic study. And so we look at areas of overactivity and underactivity. And when we know the region of the brain, is either like too much perfusion or not enough perfusion, then we know how to help that particular region. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of medication management and supplement management and so on. And so when you see on the left side there that Alzheimer's dementia, that shows that as the dementia has progressed, you'll see that there's this dropout of perfusion or blood, we use the word blood flow, you know, it's neurotransmitters, hormones, and a chemical electrical-like activity. So these holes are not good, right? Not good at all. You know, that's better. <laughs> and so you can tell with that person, you know, they're going to have problems with memory, impulse control, mood control, and so on. Because as the Alzheimer's and dementia progresses, then you look at the one on the right side, uh, shows depression, but yet you can also see that there's a lot of good activity going on and good overall blood flow uh, around the brain. Okay, wonderful. And then this, uh, of course, you guys have been in PMB a while. This is uh, before and after on some, uh, on some quantitative EEGs that we've done in the past of improving in brain function. We also have um, oops, before and afters on the, uh, sorry, it's a little blurry, before and afters on the, on the SPECT scan. So, so Dr. Henslin, this is actually before and after on, on hemp oil, correct? Right. Awesome. Yeah, this is a picture of my brain, and I want to I want to thank uh, Scott Algren because he's the guy that actually sent me a couple of bottles of oil to try, and that's how I got involved with this. And and when you look at the scan on the left in that upper uh, left hand corner there, you'll see that there's uh, looks like two holes there, and that front that's the frontal cortex which has to do with attention, concentration, judgment, impulse control, forethought, and planning. And when you look at the uh, picture just to the right of that, in that left-hand side there, you'll see an injury there uh, going down across the right temporal lobe and over to the frontal cortex. Uh, it was like in high school with sports and uh, several car accidents as a teenager, uh, I you know, injured my brain. And then when you look at the picture in the lower right hand corner, you see those two little holes right there? Well, that's not good because it kind of shocked me when I saw that because if that continues to progress as I age, that can actually be a forerunner to dementia. There's a little bit of ventricular formation change there. And then when you look at the one in the lower left hand side, there's injury in this left frontal temporal lobe and, uh, but then I went on uh, the hemp oil uh, for two weeks and I went off uh, medications and supplements and it was hemp oil only. And so what was so exciting to see was a, what we call improved perfusion or blood flow throughout the whole brain. And you can see that change in the frontal cortex. And one of the things about the frontal cortex you know, the executive part of the brain, dopamine is the main neurotransmitter uh, in that region of the brain. And I normally take a medication called Adderall to help with focus and attention. But you can see that hemp oil by itself improved the perfusion in that region of the brain. Uh, so it was actually enhancing what dopamine is there. Now, today, I've continued to use the oil. And I 
uh, actually use about 75% less Adderall than before. I still use some, but not like I was before. And then when you look in the, on that right side, uh, in that uh, upper, well, lower right-hand corner there, where those, notice how those two holes are filled in? Uh, and that surface view, which was really exciting for me because I haven't seen anything within just a couple weeks make that kind of change. And then when you look in the upper right hand corner there and that, see how that, perf how that blood flow's improved in that injured region there. And even in the left temporal lobe right down here and below, that's improved blood flow. Now, what does that mean in terms of the temporal lobes? Well, it's, you got to have good blood flow from the frontal cortex all the way down to the temporal lobes, which are the sides of your brain, in order to get new information in and to pull information out. And so if there's injury there, then what happens under stress, you know, people will have trouble retrieving that word. Or if their anxiety is too high, it shuts that down. And so pe people can't access the information they have in the past, but would calls short-term memory, long-term memory, and they have difficulty getting new information in. So what you're seeing here, which was kind of exciting to, uh, when Dr. Eamon and I went over my scan, is actually to see that the hemp oil actually improved, perfu improved perfusion throughout the whole brain, which is very, very exciting. And, and uh, perfusion just means uh, increase uh, blood flow. <coughs> So uh, is, the specs, uh, is the spec scan looking at specifically perfusion or is it any sort of functionality? Well, it looks at uh, overactivity, underactivity. Okay. And so like in those areas, like in that left picture up in the left-hand corner, when you see that drop out there in terms of function, that means more problems with attention, concentration, Forethought, which is kind of a big thing in relationships to think about something before you say it or do it, you know. And, uh, and then forethought in terms of not making impulsive decisions and choices that can be destructive to you. So, and when you look over here on the, on the right side, the after picture, you can see how that's filled in better and that there's stronger blood flow there. And there's improvements, you know, in the, in the side of the brain, the temporal lobes. So to me, and, and this is what research does over time, it's kind of exciting to see how hemp oil can play a role in overall brain health and optimizing brain health. Right. So this is, this is amazing because um, <clears throat> I'll just point out, for uh, the people out there is that if you can have the circle right here kind of fill in to this brain, I mean, this is not normal. This is not what we normally see in the brain uh, changing over two weeks, right? This is something that's, that's pretty dramatic, correct? It is very dramatic. It'd be like the equivalent, you know, like a, to get that same kind of result, the person would have to have numerous, say, hyperbaric oxygen treatments to get, when I looked at before and after scans, to get that kind of, uh, uh, improved metabolism and perfusion and better blood flow in the brain. Uh, and, that, and that's kind of exciting because in your research with uh, the neural scans, you're showing changes in activity and brainwave activity uh, within minutes after taking the hemp oil and then uh, as time goes on, improved function. And so that's what's kind of exciting because, you know, there's... Uh, the way the oil actually helps improve overall blood flow throughout the brain. Now, I have people who've been able to transition off of medications uh, just by using the hemp oil. And, and, and then I've also had people who are on um, different medication and supplement protocols where when they added in the hemp oil, it actually made it more effective you know, and that they got better anxiety relief or they got better focus and attention or mood control. Yeah, so we kind of see the very similar thing on, uh, on, the, on the neuro scan as well, which I kind of go into. But let's go over this next picture real quick. This yeah. is something I'm not familiar with. Can you okay. go over this? Is this still the spec scan, correct? Yeah. Now, 
This would be the inside active view. We just looked at the outside view, and this is more where you're looking at the cortical surface on that first set of slides. And now this is looking at the inward, more active view. Now, in that left-hand side, you can see where those two little, looks like eyes right there. That's called the left and right basal ganglia. Uh, and the basal ganglia is also connected to the amygdala. And so it's like the anxiety thermostat of the brain where it sets the level of anxiety we have in our body and it, and it influences muscle tissue and viscera. So like neck and shoulder tension, headaches, migraines, uh, can impact the GI system. It seems to be a little bit different for everybody. And when you look at, uh, at that upper left-hand picture, when you look at the bottom of that, where all that red is, well, that's called the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is right here at the base of the skull, and it plays a huge role. Like when, uh, one of the reasons like we tell everybody to exercise, we all need to be walking and exercising, working out, hiking. Because this region, you know, by doing that physical activity, it actually helps the blood flow all the way through that. And then it improves the blood flow in the frontal cortex when we're moving. And that's why when we work out or something, we get ideas or solutions or motivations because of the frontal cortex is more activated. Now, when you look at the after scan, uh, and you look at that cerebellum, can you see how that's improved in volume? So it's actually bigger, you know, which is a great thing in terms of balance, motor control, and improved frontal cortex function, particularly as people age. Uh, you want that area to be healthy because that helps us from getting falling and tripping and things like that. Now, uh, on the left picture, at the before picture, when you look at that upper right-hand picture, uh, you'll notice there's no red right there. Now, that's the posterior cingulate. And that kind of alarmed me because when we look at brain scans for people, you know, and we see an absence of the posterior cingulate, it can be like an early warning sign of potential dementia. And so that was kind of alarming. <laughs> to see that uh, on that scan. But then what was exciting on the after scan, if you look at that picture in the upper right hand corner, if you move that little white circle there up a little bit, you'll see that there's activity there in that uh, posterior singlet that wasn't there before. And so that actually helped improve that perfusion there and activated that region of the brain that didn't have that activity before. So red, the red is good then. That's that's what we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, the red is good in that area. Uh, it wasn't good to see that there wasn't because that would I would if I was talking to a patient, I would have them doing uh, looking at ways to improve memory, uh, you know, brain training skills and things like that. Because uh, I'd be cons wanting to come up with like a pre uh, preventive dementia program, you know. So it's kind of exciting. I think as time goes on, we get a chance to look at more brain scans and we actually start to do research. It adds a reality uh, about how hemp oil plays a huge role in optimizing brain health. You know, and this is still two weeks, Earl? Two weeks. Wow, okay. So yeah, that, that was what was really staggering to me was to see that kind of change just in two weeks. So yeah, it looks like you have more activity over here, and then um, and basically you're 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 seeing areas light up that they didn't before, even just after two weeks, right? Right. And then when you look at that basal ganglia that looks like eyes right there on the yeah, right, right side, here. yeah, that's on the on the left side there. That's before picture, and you look at the right side, it's actually smaller, which means there's less anxiety on that right side. Now when I did this. Uh, and went on this protocol with the hemp oil, I didn't tell my staff because I was just kind of curious as to what would happen. And when I got the after scan and I brought them both up, the guys that work with me, they just started laughing. And they said, you know, the last couple of weeks, we were wondering what in the world was going on with you because you were kind of freakily, eerily calm. 
<laughs> One guy wanted to give me a dose of Adderall to make sure I was still awake. He said, but yet you were listening and processing information and handling right. things like you normally do. So this but, correlated yeah. with you improving clinically, like your, your brain function, right? Right. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and they, they noticed that right away. And what I also noticed is that my sleep improved, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and even if I woke up in the middle of the night, I dropped back off easier than I had before. Because what happens with the hemp oil, you know, and, and now we have that product called Calm, is it helps calm down the CBG and the CBD and everything else that's in it. It helps roll down that, calm down that basal ganglia. And then that cingulate in that upper right hand corner, you see those dots right there. That's what we call, uh, that's the part of the brain that keeps us awake at night. It's like a gerbil on a wheel. And we can look at another scan to look at that like we did before. but but that anxiety center goes down and then slows down those thoughts so a person can actually drop off to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, this, this scan, yeah, this scan uh, actually shows when you see that uh, activity right in the middle in the upper part of the scan, that's, mm -hmm. called, that's called the anterior cingulate. And if you draw a line from that down to the basal ganglia and then down to the limbic system, which looks like a nose right there. Mm -hmm. And then you go back up to the other eye and then back up here, see how that forms a diamond? Mm -hmm. Well, that diamond pattern is what we call PTSD. You know, and we can actually see that on a scan. And what happens with this basal ganglia is so lit up it causes that cingulate that's right there in the middle there, like in the forehead region, it makes it like a gerbil on a wheel. And that's when a person's having trouble dropping off to sleep, those thoughts are rolling around over and over and again, and it's hard to calm down and get out of that adrenaline state to actually drop off to sleep. And so, you know, and, and today, you know, with the uh, COVID virus and particularly for first responders, sleep can be a little bit harder because people worry and fret. But when this anxiety center is calmed down with the CBD, CBG oil, well, then a person can shift out of those thoughts and just say, well, I've done all I can do today. Tomorrow's tomorrow, but right now, the best thing for me to do is to sleep. You know? Because sleep itself helps strengthen the immune, a good night's sleep helps strengthen the immune system which is what we're all interested in. And lower left and right basal ganglia, whenever you lower anxiety, you keep yourself out of that fight or flight phenomena, which also helps strengthen the immune system function as well when you're not in that high cortisol kind of adrenaline state. No, that's great because we can I can reflect that on uh, on this scan, which is the, the neural scan right here. And what you're talking about in that diamond shape, I can, I can tell you on, on, on this, uh -huh. Is that um, this is these are the lower frequencies, the two to four hertz and four to six hertz. These are sleep frequencies. Uh, uh -huh. Six to eight hertz, you're getting into low alpha. So green is normal in this case. Uh -huh. And what's happening that you, you're you're starting to see it turning blue. So the power is starting to go to go lower, right? Wow. Um, uh, sorry, go higher. The power is starting to go higher. Um, and then what happened is that when you get to fuchsia, you're at four standard deviations away from the normal. That's uh -huh. right. Here. So whenever we see this, sleep is, sleep is involved. This is PTSD also, the similar pattern. And then so talking about the involvement of the gaze of the basal ganglia. Now, this is, uh, this is surface brain mapping. And uh, the ones on the inside you talk about is, um, is looking at uh, what's called the E. Loretta. And so um, this is also just two hours after uh, uh, the CBD-CBG combination right here. And we're able see some pretty dramatic changes right away with clinical improvements as well. And so um, everything that you're reflecting on, on that SPES scan, we can actually also see on the, on the neural scan as well. So it's nice to see the congruency. It's also nice to see that it correlates clinically as well. So this is really cool. And then, um, so basically in, in the Prime Body uh, Science page, um, this is the science uh, main page that's right here. We're able to where is it? No, brain mapping right here. So let's, um, it talks about brain mapping and what it is. Um, 
And so uh, first we looked at the spec scan, guys. Now we're looking at the, the brain map, looking at quantitative EEG and analyzing different aspects of the brain, looking at markers of cognition, looking at markers of memory, uh, attention, and whatnot. And what we did is, um, let's click on the former player study first. This is the former NFL player study that we did um, right, before, right before the Super Bowl. And so for a lot of the NFL guys, um, they're, uh, they, they, they seem to have very similar issues when it comes to the brain. <laughs> uh, and it's, they, they, uh, they look a lot like the, the, the PTSD brains that, that we have on the neuroscan. Do, do, do you know, do, do, does, uh, does physical trauma look like PTSD on the, on the SPECT scan as well, Dr. Hansel? Say that again. Does does uh, does physical trauma like concussions? Does is it similar to a PTSD pattern on the spec scan as well? Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, we see that a lot here as well. And so, what we did, we took these awesome forty-two uh, former NFL players, wonderful guys, and we got them in, and we did a before and after uh, on uh, on the uh, on the focus. Yeah. So um, this time, instead of waiting two hours, we didn't wait at all. <laughs> we just did the did, did back to back on the neuroscan. Wow. And so the neuroscan takes about 25 minutes. It's 22 minutes of them actually doing activity, mimicking a calm state, um, a sleepy state. Two of them actually did fall asleep, <laughs> sleepy state, uh, and then mimic them in the hypervigilant state doing certain activities. So it's called kind of like a stress test of the brain. So what happened is that these, uh, these NFL players, um, one, of the, one of the main benefits that they, each of them expressed was that I'm able to focus better on the second one. And usually what that means is that, um, is that people are, are able to, you know, do the games a whole lot better, right? right. But exactly. they didn't know that the games were actually placebo. We wanted to see what their oh. brain is doing while yeah. they're doing the games. So oh. what, we, what we have is sort of the state of beta ratio, which is a which is an ADHD marker that was defined in pediatrics a long time ago. Now we're using adults for markers of attention and we're seeing a dramatic improvement, uh, dramatic. And, you know, speaking of, speaking of Adderall, um, this is a very similar effect uh, of that. And so this is uh, the attention markers and this is on info processing and brain speed. So this is basically sensory. As sensory is coming in, how fast is the brain starting to process? So we have some dramatic improvements here uh, as well on the uh, on, on the improvements and then you also have visual response time so when the when the uh, light hits the eyes how long does it take for the brain to actually register that and so essentially this is uh you know what i like to call nootropic right similar to adderall and vivance and stuff like that right. and right. so we're seeing these similar patterns you know on these uh, on these neural scan patterns just like what you see on the spec scan so that right. that's that's really cool um, it's, yeah, I guess what it says is that the hemp oil is actually improving perfusion in that whole frontal cortex area. Because when right. you calm, calm down that basal ganglia, then you do get better blood flow throughout the brain. Right. That's exciting. Yeah. And so um, what's even more exciting for me is uh, quality of life. Right. Is let's let's take away the former players and let's look at some military vets here on the quality of life. Is it working? Let me go back to the science page, go from there, go to the quality of life study. Come on page, load up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyways, on the quality of life study, so we test 121 people. Um, and here's a new pet line. Um, we test 121 people. Um, and we wanted to look at different scoring systems in terms of, here we go. Haha. Now oh, we're talking. Here it goes. All right, we're, we're in business. We looked at 121 people. Um, uh, these, were actually, uh, uh, these were actually military vets some with PTSD, some without. And we wanted to look at different scoring systems. So I'm gonna start with, I'm sure I'm gonna start with the one that's used in psychiatry a lot, which is the PSS, the Perceived Stress Scale. Uh -huh. So yeah, the PSS, uh, if you look at wow. this, I mean, that's a dramatic improvement uh, from month zero to month one, month right. one to 
two, month two to month three with all statistical significance from each month to the next. So I, I actually didn't expect this because I expected the curve to flatten a lot earlier. I expected, you know, maybe month one people are doing well, maybe between month two and three, not so well, but we're, we're seeing that that's not the case. So people do do better um, as the time goes on which is awesome. So this is called a perceived stress skill, guys. And, and basically it's a, it's a scoring system of, of perceived stress. And uh, it's a great uh, psychological tool for uh, measuring like the perception of stress. Right. And then this one is called as the ISS um, or ISI, sorry, which is the insomnia severity index. So this is looking at sleep. And of course, the higher the number, the worse the sleep is. And so as that, as once again, month one to month two, one, two to month three, month, and uh, it's, it's significantly improved. And once again, for some of the other things that I've seen, like magnesium and some other uh, hemp brands, uh -huh. and looking at L-theanine, we see those individually, they, they, do not, they do not improve like this month after month. They usually flatten off a lot earlier after month one, even after week one. And so, um, so this is uh, really exciting to see. And this makes sense kind of based on what we see in the brain perfusion on the spec scan or right. on the, on the QEEG on the neuro scan. Right. And exactly. so, yeah. So, and this, this really just pumps me up because it's kind of continues to validate the things that we're doing, knowing that this actually works, which exactly. is great, right. Well, and can you also say that like if people aren't noticing a big change in month one, the, encourage them to stay with it because uh, there'll be improvements months two and three and so on absolutely let's see that's that seems to be the case yeah and then the msq is not used in psychology the msq is used in functional medicine it's called a medical symptom questionnaire and it looks wow. at, yeah and it looks at symptoms in terms of the higher the number the worse in your symptomology and the toxicity yeah. And so anybody of above 25, we have to, we have to, you know, get a hold of And These people start close to 60. They were able to get down uh, after, after three months as well. And so, <clears throat> and so that's really exciting. Um, I think that we're, we're improving quality of life. We're improving wellness and we're seeing on these, on these brain images that we're having uh, improvements, you know, throughout, and this is, this is your brain and throughout we're seeing on the quantitative EEGs that there's actually improvements throughout. And so uh, this is kind of a no brainer, no, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, what, what I'm wondering, Dr. Ron, you know, yeah. is when I see that improved perfusion, I, I think what that can also might mean, uh, which only research will tell, but uh, it's almost like any supplement or anything a person's, medication is taking, they're going to show increased benefit from it as well. Right. No, absolutely. I, I, I think it's without a doubt, it's one of the most exciting things that, that we see. And then also, <clears throat> I'm just taking it down a few notches for you guys looking out there. And, and kudos to everyone. There's, there's a lot of participants here. No one has dropped off yet. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and just so you guys know, this is not something that I don't think ever, anyone's really talked about before looking between quantitative EEG and spec scan. No. So for those of you who are, who are nerdy like us in the room, you know, get excited because, because we certainly are. Um, <clears throat> but it's really creating, it's creating uh, uh, neural circuits and neural pathways that really help the way that we function. And that, that's, uh, that's truly amazing in not just neuroscience, but I think in, in life in general, you know. And so, um, Austin, are you still there? Hopefully. Doc, I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> I, I, um, I actually have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I remember sitting with a therapist once and she looked at me and she said, you have an anxiety disorder. And I just, it was the last time I was ever set with her. Cause I just, I refused to believe that I felt like my body was responding in a way that was creating anxiety, but that I could figure it out. Right. And obviously I, I, over the course of time I did, and I realized I didn't have a disorder. I just, I was in a season. I was in a circumstance. And what y'all are talking about tonight is a reminder of that. I feel like it's so empowering. I would love for y'all to revisit. I mean, maybe just kind of drive the point home or emphasize what y'all are saying is you can have an issue with your brain 
maybe because of trauma physically, maybe because of trauma emotionally, maybe because of poor choices you've made. And you can actually give your body what it needs. And tonight's example is we're talking about CBD and CBG, particularly our focus product. And your body can actually repair and restore and heal itself. Yeah. So, you know, driving that point home is that, uh, you know, the scans and the numbers don't lie, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we're seeing actual quantitative uh, measurements uh, in numbers and in mathematical depiction models of what the brain, you know, actually looks like. 